Okay. okay. So today presentation, I'll try to talk to you a little bit about how QField can be used in a professional setting. Um, I will give you a little bit of hints of what can be done, what should be done, what should not be done. Uh, but I also would like to show you some of the most powerful features that we have in recent version of QField, um, so that you actually see, see that in action. Um, as I said, I, I work and I founded OpenJS.ch, which are the main drivers behind QField. We are the, the company that's uh, actively developing it, but um, not here to talk about that. I'm Marco Bernazzocchi, and let's started. Why QField at all? Because um, when, um, when you're in the field, you need to be efficient. You want your people to, to be as effective as possible. It might be raining, it might be windy, it might be cold, they might be hungry. And you want them to have the best experience possible so that they get you fantastic data. And that is um, something that QField was built from the beginning um, with that in mind. When we decide if to put a new button in QField, we have big discussions if that button has the, the right to be there or not, and if it suits a purpose or not. Um, as I said, um, you might be in that situation. You might be the GIS analyst in the office which has perfect temperature, comfy chair, and, and is doing um, all the work in an easy setting, but your people out there will, in certain cases, not be in a perfect situation. So always remember when you are the person setting up those projects, um, there are a couple of points that are crucial to having a successful experience on the field. And that is not only with QField, that applies to any field mapping um, software that you might be using. So the first thing that you need to think about is to optimize your projects. That means it might be that your QGIS project that you're using has 20, 30 attributes per layer because that makes sense for that layer. But here is where you need to go and ask yourself the question, which one of those attributes are the one that I actually need people on the field to be digitizing? Which of these attributes are the one where being on the field actually brings an extra value to my project and my data? So that's your very first question that you need to ask yourself at any point you're preparing a project for a field survey. And what you do here is you focus. You try to reduce, you try to um, kick away things that are not important, you hide them off, and then specifically in QField, but I'm sure that other tools can do that as well, um, you separate things. Give them a way to, to look at, like in this case at the picture, you see um, generic informations, and then pictures, issues, reviews. If somebody is not taking pictures, it's not gonna go to the uh, issues um, section. So you're going to make their life much, much easier. And then configure your project properly. If you want them to input a number, well, give them the chance to input a number easily. Um, if you want them to choose between some values, do that work for them. So always, always think about the poor guys that are out there in the rain and in the cold, and they are digitizing data for you, and you want them to digitize as good as possible. Simplify. Uh, Besides configuring uh, the ideal widget, you really need to think what can you kick away. Um, simple forms are, are key. Huh? Use default values. Don't make somebody type today's date and today and digitization time every time they are out there. They're going to hate you. There are tools that in, in QField, you can just set um, default now. Whenever they digitize something, there's going to be a date, a time is going to be there. If they want to change it, they can still change it because maybe they had a coffee and the data was actually captured 10 minutes earlier. That's no, no problem. But don't make them do work that is not mandatory. So if you can have a machine do work for you, let it do it. 
And um, in, in QField, you have the chance to be able to set default values, which are very complex because you can use all the power of QGIS expressions as default values. So you can, you can go beside having dates and time. That's just the clear uh, candidate for that is, is the date of the digitization. Set constraints. That's another big, big thing. If you have people that should be digitizing something, allow them to not make mistakes by helping them and by telling them, look, you're telling me that you have 100,000 boxes of bees. Maybe you did a mistake in typing. Maybe you're, that's, that's out of the, uh, the amount of bees that we are looking for. Um, or we have, uh, I don't know, um, three and a half cars. What happened to that half car? I mean, maybe it's a legitimate case, and that is where you can work with hard constraints, which are the red ones in QField. You can set a constraint to be mandated. So if you set a constraint to be mandatory, you're not going to be able to digitize data unless you fix the issue. Or the lower one, which you can see um, down in the amount of Bs, uh, the yellow ones, those are constraints that are suggestions. For example, the amount of bees in this case here is null, and we are suggesting our uh, surveyors not to do that. But if they think, well, it is null, and it has to be null, then they can go on and save their, their um, data. These are kind of very generic things, but those will save you probably 80% or, in, or they will save your people in 80% of the situation. Another um, point that I didn't mention here that is very good for a specific case of trying to avoid um, data conflicts is to manage your people well. If you can, send them in different places. It's just going to be so much easier ha managing the data after because you will not have two people digitizing in the same place and potentially creating conflict. So if you have the chance to do that on us more on a social contract level, where you say you go to the southern part of Florence, you go to the northern part of Florence, and you do digitizing this way, it's going to save you a lot of headache. Um, obviously, it's not always the case that you can do that. Um, but when you can, do that. That's, that's, a, very easy, uh, that's a very easy way to avoid um, conflict. And then use powerful features. And here I'm going to show you a little bit of the features that we have in QField that can make your, your professional surveying way um, much, much easier. So one of the latest things we had is navigation. Um, the navigation you're seeing here is the most complex navigation we have, and that is actually navigation to vertexes of polygons. So you can see um, that I can choose to which vertex of the polygon I want to navigate, and it will automatically uh, give me a trace to that point. The first, uh, when I turn it on at first, it shows me the centroid of the building, and then I can say, well, no, I actually want uh, the second vertex, and then I can just move around to the right, to the left with the arrows, and change different, um, different vertexes on that polygon. That means that when you have polygons, you can just say, I need to go to the northernmost point there, and it will navigate you. Uh, it doesn't do route navigation or routing. It's basically just telling you where to go, uh, what uh, azimuth, what distance, and so on. Navigation is, has been added across the board in, in QField. You have it in the search bar. You can put in coordinate and say navigate to there. You have navigation to features. You have, um, uh, sorry, to polygons, you have navigation to features. So in plenty of places, we added navigation. Then when you're using um, professional GNSS receivers, um, something that is very often done is that you don't just take the point at a certain moment, but you take an average of a point. So you stay in a place for three minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you need to. And QField will keep on um, getting the, the points until we get to the minimum number of positions collected, 
which we can set here. In this case, we are setting to six. So QField will try, as soon as we click on, um, on the plus button on the right side, we'll start collecting the location data. And you'll see at the top of the location, there is a bar moving. It's telling me, good, now we have six points. And now QField is averaging your position and using that as coordinates for the pond that you're digitizing. That means that you can easily leave a GNSS receiver somewhere, do a thousand um, iteration of this, and as soon as you have thousand iteration, Q, uh, QField will uh, average those and will save those to, to your point layer. Staying on the external GNSSs, um, we added everything um, for that, so we have support for your Leica, Trimble, whatever, um, um, happy. We have plenty of devices downstairs in our booth. You can come and have a look. Uh, you can do sub-centimeter. You can actually do millimeter precision um, with QField. It's not QField that, that is saying if the precision comes or not. It's your device. QField just deals with it and, and can save that. It can save your dilution values. It can save your accuracy. And, uh, and that's, that's it, basically. You have all, all this uh, kind of thing. It, as, so, as long as your GNSS device is streaming information over Bluetooth, then you're good. Then we added a stakeout view, a precise view. That's something that uh, is used in, in the navigation mode. So you can say, as soon as I'm closer than five meters or 10 meters that the menu you saw there, the view will change, and it will show you this precise uh, location view that is used, for example, when you need to go to a certain specific point. Maybe you have the coordinates of a cable that was buried, and you want to go there. You'll put in your coordinates, you navigate to those, set that you want the, um, <coughs> the stakeout precise view, and as soon as you get into a radius of a certain amount of meters to that point, it will change to the new view. It will give you the azimuth, and it will actually show your point of yourself getting close to your target. So pretty neat way to, to navigate to, um, to your points. QR code, that's actually something that's coming in version 2.3, so in the next release. Um, well, I don't think I have to explain too much. Uh, what they are and what they are useful for, but they will be in QField. Um, <clears throat> basically, you can use them anywhere where you're inputting text, so in the search. So you can, for example, have your assets with a QR code. You can get there, you scan the QR code, and it will search um, the text that the QR code is giving back into your data. So you can immediately find, for example, an ID of a certain uh, asset that you placed somewhere, and that will make much, much more efficient looking for things. For, for your people out there. Then um, animati animated markers. Um, in this demo project is, is very playful, but the idea of bringing animation on a map, on a mobile, could be something that really could help to draw attention. I wouldn't overuse it, because it will just become playful and, and, and distract people, but in some specific case, an animation could be something that's really helpful to, to focus um, your attention of your users, or to get the attention of your users, not to focus them. <laughs> then um, live default values is, is another little neat thing that you can configure um, that basically connects different fields in a form together. Here you can see if, um, if I change the seed number or if I change the, the name of the seed, all the data related to that are, are updated. So you see that the moonshine or the mischief um, um, pumpkin, sorry, um, are, the picture are changing. So you could have your, your data linked from an external table and being loaded up dependingly on what you're choosing. So you can actually have your forms um, being, being uh, dynamic there. Spatial bookmarks, that's also something that's super useful. 
um, if you keep on going at same places, you keep on having to having the same extent, same zoom, etc. You can set a spatial bookmark and you can use it and reuse it all the time. So that's that's something that really increases the the speed of uh, of work from people. Atlas Print, um, maybe you know it from QGIS. You can you can print plenty of things in QField. You can also say make a selection of of different. Um, you can select different um, polygons and say generate an atlas print out of this. So you could, if you're in the field, select whatever you worked on, create an atlas and send it by email back to the office and they can already start working on whatever you, you generated that very day. So that's very, very uh, powerful. And it's something that uh, integrates well with uh, multi-selection where you can also select multiple things and change in one go, one attribute, for example, um, change the date or, or something like that everywhere. Temporal filtering, that's also something very useful. If you have a lot of data that have a, a time stamp on it, you can filter whatever you see on the map on a temporal basis. So you can go and say, well, I only need to see the data that were from the last, that were digitized in the last week, for example, that can, you can do in the field. You wanna see your assets on the field that are very recent or very, very old. So in the field, you can uh, dynamically react to those kind of things as well. We support OAuth protected web services, so you can integrate uh, easily into your, your uh, services that are, um, that are protected. And then we have all the part about management of the users. That's more on the QField cloud part. I'm gonna have a talk at 5.15 today afternoon, more on the QField part, but here just quickly, if you're using that, the important thing here um, you have this concept of organizations where you can say, well, these are members of the organization. They can do that in the organization. They're admin or they are members. And then at the next level, we have teams where you can say, well, the team Florence East um, and the team Florence West and uh, certain members are part of one team or the other. And then within the project itself, you can set collaborators. You can say, well, Marco is a collaborator and the team Florence West is a collaborator and they have different rights. And there we have five different levels going from read-only to reporter, which can only generate new data, to editor and manager, which can also cancel, delete data. And these are then settings that are automatically set in QField as well. So it's not that you just get an error, you're not allowed to do this, but you actually cannot do it ahead because QField will react in the user interface. We support PG services, which is also something used a lot in uh, enterprise um, world. Um, you can obviously, but this will go on much more in the other presentation, attribute change, whatever, like tracking, whatever was changed. Um, here you can see we pass from false to true. So we have a conflict, um, we have a conflict management as well, where you can say, well, apply this or do not apply that. Yes, so that's the status as of today. Um, what's next? Um, this morning I got a very exciting email from a, um, for a, from a fruit brand that told us that um, we can click on a button and um, we are out of test flight and uh, we can have QField also on iOS, but that's not official news at all. I'm just telling you in secret here. So QField 2.3 is going to be available as well um, on, on the App Store. Then. Um, we're doing, well, some of the things you saw were, are gonna come in 2.3. Um, we're doing uh, a lot of work in, in very different areas. Um, if you are interested in more of that, we have a booth downstairs. We have plenty of templates there. We can show you things. There are the developers. I don't develop much anymore there. Um, so come down, we can show you around what, what things are there. And, um, oops, wrong computer. Obviously, QField is an open source project. Uh, OpenGIS is putting a lot of effort in it, a lot of time in it. Um, there are plenty of support, plenty of, of companies that have helped us with donation, with sponsoring, with paid feature development. That's the very same model that uh, the QGIS has. That's how we found the development of, of QField. So please, if you can, help us fund the work. Thank you very much.